It's uh, end of April. Water is freezing. Apparently uh, they had their last bits of ice come off just uh, last Monday. This is Toby's first time in the boat and he is pretty unsure about what is going on here. But uh, I think he's gonna settle in, we'll see. He's a little crazy, we call him Turbo Toby for a reason, this guy has got batteries to spare. So this is interesting. I didn't get my GPS out, my map, or my compass or anything whenever I started. I just figured, yeah, okay, this is no problem. I know where we need to go. And uh, we set off and I, I took a left and I should have taken a right. Got into the lake. And so I'm just paddling along. I got the wind in my back. It's great. And then the wind started really picking up. And uh, it doesn't look like much at all out there. Anyhow, um, I've stopped in this area here. And uh, uh, this is the opposite direction of Rock Lake. There's Toby. Come on, Toby. Good boy. This is Jack Russell Terry. <laughs> I'm for a drink. Yeah, he is great. He's uh, nine months old. I'm maybe catching up on ten now. Super motivated for anything. <laughs> So here is the setup. This took me a hell of a long time. <laughs> I agonized over what trees to put it on, uh, trying to get it out of the wind, um, just the whole thing, getting the fly right. Um, it took me a while. So we're just heading back to our, our site here. Got some uh, standing dead. I'm gonna cut this up, take the uh, branches off, delimit, and that should be good for the night. I reckon. Toby's never really been in the water. Not in the bath. Come on, Toby, let's not get wet. Toby! Come on. Toby! Oh boy. Yeah, you're sleeping in the hammock, right? That's awesome. Wet dog in the hammock. There he goes. The wild Toby. Good boy, Toby. Good boy. Oh yeah, there you go. So we have some wood. I've got it uh, broken down. Got some starter here. I got some bundled up here ready to go. I'm gonna start it with good old birch bark. And we have uh, our next size here, medium, and then some larger stuff that's gonna keep us going for an hour, hour or two. Not a bad night. So the wind has completely died down. Possibly going to get rain tonight. So maybe wind will come with that. But at least I know we're well set. This guy here is just struggling to get going. Wood's kind of wet. Fire just went poof. Got nice and heated up in there. Keep it going or to get it going whenever you just have coals. 
you just want to make sure that you lock in as much heat as you can but just keep a little bit open between the logs here you want to just keep a little bit open between them to get the air in but you still want to hold in a lot of heat it becomes a little furnace oh this is nice Toby doesn't really know too much about fire we have a fireplace but he is uh, he is a very daring dog he's just testing himself or testing it right now fire is one of those self teachers whoa what was that Toby Not in the water, Toby. He really wants to go in the water. Not a good time to go in the water. Frogs are going crazy. Fire. I'm letting the coals get going. I'm going to boil some water. I'm just sitting here. My little square of my Thermarest pad. Quite handy because it folds up really nicely. And it's great for sitting on. It makes us some, some little rock comfortable. And then that's what I put in the uh, in the foot part of my uh, my hammock to keep my feet warm. So it's 9:30. Toby's still going. He found a piece of bark, I think. <laughs> Jack Russell Terrier. <laughs> uh, I love him. He's great. Yeah, he's got a lot of personality. The chill is really starting to come through now. Oh, Toby, stop going in the water, little dude. Yeah, you gotta stop that. Oh, you're all wet. No, 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 thank you. I don't know how this works best, maybe like this. <laughs> it was kind of funny. So anyway, so for layering right now, it's, uh, it's getting pretty chilly. So what I've got on is my, um, I got my buff on here. I can kind of pull up if I want. This keeps my neck nice and warm. I'm going to put this on and then I have my shell on top. So it will be my uh, my shell, my fleece, my long sleeve, and then my uh, my t-shirt under that. That should be plenty warm. This guy is such a little stinker. He's so proud of himself. I just had to chase him down and he was taken off with this. That's his bag of treats. It is now almost 11 o'clock. Toby is still going. I'm drying them off as best we could. I used my little micro towel, which is now drying by the fire. Worked pretty good, actually. This is the uh, the really thin towel. I had the other one, other micro towels, but they weren't micro enough. But uh, yeah, this thing is great. It packs up really small, and it really does soak up quite a bit. I'm just packing up the bear bag right now, and uh, this is the usual stuff that I put in it. It's um, dog snacks. The uh, this is for training. I'm doing a lot of training with him, so I had to bring quite a few of his uh, little training treats. This is his uh, Toby's food. This is my little pouch for the treats. Um, this is his food dish with some food left in it. I've got my toothbrush, soap, anything kind of smelly. A food bag, of course. And this is my mess kit, so I take everything in there, and uh, that goes up too. So the bear bag is ready to go. The actual rope is right here. Yeah, and so uh, basically I just took my water bottle, put it on the end of the line, and tossed that over. It's really not that bright, because I get my water bottle caught up there, and that's just a whole lot of trouble. But anyways, it's really easy. And I've been doing it for forever. Let's go ahead and pull on this line here. You get it too high, too close to the branch, and raccoons will come down, and they'll just drop themselves down onto it. Uh, you get too close to a tree, and a bear can climb the tree and then reach out and grab it. That's too far out. And, of course, too close to the ground, they can stand up and try to get it. So I'm just going to take this rope, and it's going to find a tree or something. And so there we go. I just have it tied down here. This is our setup right now with the uh, hammock down. I just had a, an issue with my card. I just lost some of my video. So it's nice right now because the wind is really blowing in from behind here. So we've got a nice cover 
to uh, get our morning stuff done and get our cooking. It's been really, uh, really blowing, but uh, hopefully it'll be going with us enough that it won't be a problem even if we do have white caps out there. Breakfast is getting set here. I've just got some uh, <coughs> cowboy coffee just going in here. I'll leave that in for about five minutes and then move that over into my uh, Nalgene. I got some porridge. This is just two of those instant packs of porridge. And um, got a little bit of gourd from my half, but that'll probably do me for the morning. So I just transferred the uh, coffee from the pot here. I don't know if you can see, but tons of grounds in there. I left it for about uh, a little over five minutes. And in here there are none. Nothing came out. So yeah, cowboy coffee is super easy. You just need to be able to transfer it into something else once it has uh, sat and all the, the grinds have gone to the bottom. Otherwise it gets too strong and too bitter. But anyways, I am looking forward to this. Our sleep in the hammock last night was actually pretty good. Um, took a little bit to get Toby sorted out, but um, once we got him in place, it was great. I can just kind of roll over and he just kind of climbs over me or moves to the other side or moves down, moves up. He, he's happy. Once he's tired, he's just, uh, he's pooped out. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't really care much. Well, I've been hoping that this wind would calm down, but uh, uh, that is not the case. We've got uh, white cap going on out there now. You don't want to go in that water. I have never flipped my boat in waves on a lake, ever. But boy, I tell you, it only takes that once. We just went over to the other side of the island. It is beautiful there. It's got sun, there's no wind, so much better put in. And um, anyways, either we're gonna go there and uh, hang out for a bit. And uh, I think we might have a better run at getting a good position to get back with as little uh, risk as possible. So we got ourselves set up here with the boat. We're gonna head over to the other side of the island. Now the only thing about the other side here is that it's so calm and it's so beautiful, so quiet. It's kind of deceiving what it's actually gonna be like out once you get out there. Normally, I'd be looking at this as a darn near perfect thing where the wind is going pretty much my direction. The white caps aren't too bad. This would be uh, ideal. But again, because I'm solo and it's so cold out there and that water is so freezing, I mean, it would be just above zero. Um, that, uh, where are we going here? There's no real path here, so. Anyways, um, yeah, so we just don't know what we're going to, uh, what we're going to get. All right, here we come. Oh yeah, here we go. This is a beautiful day. This is a whole lot better. This looks a lot more manageable. I can take off this way at first and then stay closer to shore. And we got some sun, may even take a little time and enjoy it here. All right, sweet. So this is my new mess kit. This is the uh, Litec by Primus. Uh, I made up the pot cozies for it as I usually do. Um, and I made a couple of modifications to it. The handles normally both attach, it's kind of like those cups where they the two handles here and they kind of come together and you hold them together. But um, I didn't really like them, they were pretty short. Uh, I didn't like how it, um, uh, you couldn't get the cozies on nicely, it didn't fit in your pack quite as nicely. And so I um, did my own handle here. So this is three millimeter uh, steel that I got at uh, Home Depot and I got some of this other cover here. I put this side here a little bit lower than this one because you're going to hook this side in first, pull this over, and then hook it in. So basically I'll show you here. What you do is you just take it and you hook it into that hole and you pull it across and you hook the other one into that one. And this is super strong. 
it comes out nice and far it's right up to the top here you can turn it upside down i quite like it then we have my handkerchief i usually like to keep a handkerchief just to keep it from scratching it is a non-stick um, a non-stick pot i also have my x cup in here i had switched to a metal cup but uh, i went back to the x cup whenever i was going to going for a light but it fits in here like a glove it's absolutely perfect there's basically hardly any wiggle room in there at all so it's almost like it's made for it all these things really fit together quite well i'll show you um, i also keep my spoon and then in here we have my stove now this is an alcohol burning stove i love this stove it's the um Oh, I can't remember the name, it's eluding me at the moment. But you basically, you just take this top off here, unscrew this, there's already fuel in it, and you just light it, and then you can put this back on top to adjust the heat on it. And here we have a windscreen. Doesn't go, well, it goes just all the way around, but it's mainly just to kind of stay loose. And then in here, we have the hobo stove. And this fits so perfectly around this pot it's also like it's made for it it's just a, a perfect fit so this is from uh, this is from Ikea it's a uh, the Ikea uh, spoon and utensil holder so anyhow I uh, picked one up and cut it out in the front with a uh, Dremel so this is just enough room to get some uh, wood in there and then this here I kind of bring it in a bit so that way I can fit one of these guys here nicely across like so and then so you put one in there and then one also goes in there and then that is the perfect width for this here and there's no way that this guy is going anywhere it's very secure in there and it keeps a lot of the heat inside it's got um, all the holes in here i put some um, tin tape around it here because you didn't need all of the holes but in the end i use the if you have a really windy day it's just not it's just still going to have too much aeration so on a windy day you can just take it put it down and then take this and wrap it around whichever way the wind is blowing i really like with this being able to use either the uh, the stove or um, use wood in it so you start up pine cones and dry wood and uh, yeah it works really well all right we were just doing some collecting we got uh, about yay for sticks I'm gonna break that up and uh, we'll use that for the stove to uh, to boil up some water for some spaghetti all right we got birch bark this much birch bark should be good This guy out here. Normally, I get right on top of it. There we go. Wipe away right away. I could usually put this here like around my hand or something so I don't use it. And then we're going to start feeding in smaller bits here. Yeah, so it's going quite good now. Basically, I just keep on feeding in these sticks. Just put a new one in and you just kind of feed it in and keep feeding it um, underneath or inside. Yeah, they're just kind of stacked up there right now. So they're just kind of burning through. It lasts quite a while once you get them all in. 
and um, yeah so as you can see even though the fire is blowing around that handle I can still grab the end of the handle without a problem not even like up to here so you can still get a good grip and you don't have to worry about them getting uh, too hot so anyways this is just about done so here's gonna be our lunch we uh, I've got some spaghetti which I've broken in half um, and then I put them in the paper towels so that way it stops them from poking through the bag and you can still use like a thin ziplot. Uh, this is homemade spaghetti sauce that, uh, yeah, I make this stuff myself. We love it. Super simple one. I'll put the recipe up on my page. Um, so we're going to rehydrate that and throw a little ghee in there. And the water, I believe, is, yeah, water is now out of boil. So we're ready to get the spaghetti in there. I'm going to throw in the spaghetti. Let that go down. I'm probably just going to let it cook in there. Normally I take those and I take the spaghetti and I put it in the uh, the cozies or whatever noodles I'm cooking. But um, in this case here, I've got the fire going, so I'm not using any extra fuel. And this is going to keep it hot for a little, for a little while. we got good coals down there. So I'm just going to leave it in here and not bother with the cozies this time. I just took a little bit of the water from the, uh, from the spaghetti and I threw it in my cup with the uh, spaghetti sauce. So we're gonna let that go ahead and do its magic. I just put it in there and it's already starting to break down here. This stuff comes back, like spaghetti sauce, that sort of thing comes back. You would never know it was dehydrated. So our spaghetti and our spaghetti sauce is done. I wish you guys could smell this. All right, I'm gonna let that cool a bit and dig in. Oh man, this stuff came out so perfectly. I mean, it's spaghetti, but everything tastes so good out here. Mm. Mm -hmm. So the other nice thing about this pot handle is that you can really scoop water easily. Um, the pot can go right upside down, no problem. You can just scoop and you can get far enough back on the handle that you can keep your hands out of the water whenever you're doing it. You can get it right down in there. See where Toby's standing, that's right where the, uh, where the pot was that I was cooking with. So. Everything is all cleared up. You'd never know that anything was there. All right, now we just need to get you in the boat. So this is what this, this thing is good for. I can just pick them up and then put them in. There we go. Nice job, Toby. Okay, hold on. I'm coming. There we go. Wow. So there are white caps all around in the pines, in the pines, where huh. the sun never shines, you'll shiver when the cold wind blows. There's a grave in the pines, where the sun never shines, there's a grave that's shaded with the pines. My true love lies in a narrow grave In the pines where the sun never shines She snow lies deep on my true lover's grave In the pines, in the pines, in the pines All right, this is looking better. I'm starting to calm down a little bit in here. No, what? That was a little scary. That was one of the scarier paddles that I've had. And I don't know what it looked like on here. But it's the sort of thing where if it were to, uh, if I were to go sideways unexpectedly even now, so, um, and this boat went, that could be it. I think the chances of getting out of this water are not, uh, not terrific. So, anyways. <laughs> Crazy. Completely different day in here. So we're just going to follow the right hand shore here. It's supposed to go down to minus two tonight and snow tomorrow. Anyways, I think what we might do is make an early one of it tomorrow, but it will be extra cold. But we'll see. Just make sure we get out while the water's still still. This guy is so good in the boat. Is this down here by my, by my knees? It's good too, actually. You can get under my seat, so if he's looking for shade, you can go there. This is exactly what happened to me yesterday going into the other lake, where I got in a certain amount. Wind just kicked up like it did now, but it's all the way back 
close to where I came from, white caps everywhere. So I just got out my GPS, and uh, right now with me doing basically nothing, just keeping us straight, we're going six kilometers an hour. So nothing wrong with that. We're really hustling here. Well, this is much nicer in here. Still have some wind behind us. But if we can, uh, right up ahead here, we've got like an opening. And on the left, the landmass on the left, that's an island. If we duck in behind that, it's going to be beautiful in there. I'm hoping maybe there's some sights there. I have not seen a soul on this trip. Nobody. It's nice here. I'm digging this. This is beautiful. This is certainly nowhere near as far as I generally go. I usually like to put in a few uh, big portages. Um, so that way you know, I have a little more solitude. And that's what I was planning on doing here. I was planning on going to the Lac de Louise. Or Lac Louisa. But um, yeah, kind of got turned around at the beginning. I think in the end it was probably for the best. And um, stay away from some of the bigger lakes for April. And um, yeah, and it's given me more time to kind of work with my gear, get the hammock up and sort out the uh, ins and outs of it. I got a few things I want to try. So uh, I think this will be good. Toby really doesn't seem to mind this. I'm glad he's not getting sick in the canoe because he does get car sick. He threw up a mirror three times on the way to Algonquin in Ottawa. Alright. Still there. Looks like it's pretty good. Hey Toby. Good boy. Yay. So we're just doing another little mini portage here. We're just shifting sights. This one here is still quite windy and I noticed that there's another one down the path here. So we're going to take that. Come on Toby! And because these sights have no portages leading up to them, they tend to have more luxury built into them. This one has a big shelf to the kitchen. Maybe I'll make use of that. All right, yeah, here we go. A lot less breezy here. Okay. Oh, there's Toby. Hello, Toby. Off, off, good boy. So there's a hammock all set up. So any notable notes, I have the uh, lines here running to trees. So I don't need any holes uh, for those. I usually keep about like 20 foot lines on the, each end there. A couple of custom things I did here is one, I uh, designed and printed these little hooks here. And these are for um, your under quilt. And so what it does is that you just snap the line for your underquilt into here and this will hold it in place. So this will never, the elastic will never go under. And then uh, over here I have the same thing. I've got it hooked on to here so it stops this from coming out. This is one of my big problems is whenever I'd roll over my shoulders would kind of catch this and it would take this under and then it would just snap over to the other side and then you had no more underquilt. And it led to uh, a couple cold nights. So I was just sleeping in my backyard but... I was sorting it out. The only place that I don't have one of the clips for the under quilt on the uh, zipper of the hammock is right here, which is on my bottom right, because that is the foot box. So there's some extra material here and you put your feet into here. And if I have that line there, I can kind of feel it pulling and it puts extra tension there. And so I don't really need it because everything else pretty much keeps it in place. I also have, these little guys here 
which go on each side of the under quilt line as well. And these guys are a little bit thinner. I designed and printed these too. They're a little bit, uh, a little bit thinner, so they really hold on to the line and don't let go whenever you uh, you have them in. So whenever you move them, they stay where they are. They don't move around. This is a, a part of cut off four sections of one of those uh, thermarest the Z lights, I think. And um, this goes in between here. So this has two layers to it. So this is layer one, this is layer two. So you just slide that into there. So I just slid it in and you, you want to get it where it's right at the edge of your uh, under quilt or just a little bit over over an overlap. I have mine coming over here about uh, a couple inches. And um, yeah, and you slip it over into the foot box that way as far as it will go and that will keep my feet warm because if you don't have anything under you then uh, it gets very cold uh, anything will compress that's under you so it'll just squish all of its ability to keep you warm so whenever you push down here you'll see i can push right down and this doesn't compress at all so that way it keeps its loft and that's what's going to keep you warm this is my stuff pillow and i have it hanging from a string to the top of the uh, of the hammock and I just stuff this and that way it just always stays in place it doesn't go sliding down because everything ends up right in the middle if it's not locked down I also made this here which is like a little gear organizer it just slides on the uh, on the line there I made these little uh, these little hooks here and you just stitch those on and this has Two pockets on each side. Over here is just the thing with the war bonnet. This is their little shelf. You just throw things over there and it just kind of hangs out there. Um, it's a really great spot because you have there's really nowhere to put anything in a hammock that doesn't have a shelf like that and if you don't have a, a little gear organizer. So now I got lots of space. I have to say that I'm really uh, I'm really impressed with this whole thing so far. We've got our pipe bell down. So I've received a lot of questions about what I bring for my dog. So um, it's changed a little bit over the years and especially now that I've started with um, the hammock. As it is, this is what I bring for my dog whenever I go canoe camping. I bring a leash and I carry that on me at all times. We have, um, this is the little Tupperware for dog food so this is the dog dish i like to keep a separate dish rather than putting it back into the main dog food container or bag because they often don't eat it all and so i want to have an idea of what they're eating during the day so i'll take it and i'll just put the lid on throw it in the pack where it's easy to get and then whenever i get a chance like at a portage or something like that i'll put it down to see if they want to have any more um, I also have a lot of treats on this trip, but that's because Toby is still a puppy. He's about nine months old. So we are going through training right now. And then finally, I've got um, the rest of his food. And he has one cup of his kibble uh, in the morning and one cup at night. So it's two cups a day. And I always put in one extra cup. Underneath all of this stuff, this is something that I made for the dogs. And so that attaches from one end of the canoe to the other about, in about the middle of the canoe and the dogs can get under it and get away from the rain um, or get out of the sun. I used to bring a cut down sleeping bag because they would get really cold at night. But now because Toby sleeps just right in there because it's just an over quilt. He just, I just throw the quilt over him and then uh, he's good. We're just doing our usual scout, picking up some birch bark and uh, looking for some standing dead. We have quite a bit already, so we may be good. I just figured I'd come out and have a little poke about. We're gonna have a little craft dinner tonight. It's always a easy go-to menu item for me. I rarely ever have it. I love it. I'm gonna do it with the tranchia. All you have to do is you take off the lid. Uh, you can use your ferro rod for this, I often do, but we'll just one hand in. 
light this up. This is now going. And uh, put this on top when we wait about, this will probably be about eight minutes. Not, uh, not a lot to go wrong with a stove like that. Very solid. I like to be able to uh, control the flame with, the, uh, with this lid. And I like that you can leave fuel in it and pack it away with it. Oh, look who's here. It's Toby, a wild Toby. Right, so uh, we're done with the stove. The uh, noodles are in the uh, water here. They're boiled up. You just do them enough to make sure that they're not gonna stick and then you can stick them in here for a few minutes. Now this is the tricky part. Take this here and you toss it on top and you try to get it <laughs> right on it. It doesn't always work. That's a challenge. Let's see if I can do it. Here we go. You don't burn yourself here. Oh, see, that's close. Oh, maybe I can. No. There it is. Noodles are perfect. Time for some ghee. Yeah, that's right, I'm getting crazy. We've got lots of ghee left. And now it's ready. Yeah. I'm just walking around right now with my uh, craft dinner. And yeah, it's just such a nice, simple view. I mean, I didn't even do a portage, but again, because it's in April, I haven't seen anybody. A new piece of gear that I picked up are my pants. And I am digging these pants. The best thing about them is that they are, uh, they're from Costco and they cost $22. Um, you've got a zip pocket here. They're fast dry. You've got another filter pocket here. Uh, your regular pocket. You've got on this side you have a pocket on the outside. A couple small ones here which I don't use. This one here currently has my hat, my gloves in it. This one here has a lighter and spare battery, spare SD cards. This one has Maddie's or um, um, Toby's stuff, a leash and some treats. Uh, this one here has my map in it. And then my pockets, I generally try to keep them free. This one here carries my camera. And uh, the other one I keep for bits and pieces. And they also zip off. But they have been great. They're holding up well. They do dry quickly. They're, um, they're BC brand. They have belt loops, which I like. Yeah, I really like these a lot. So this guy keeps on coming over here and pulling out the pegs that I make <laughs> to put this thing in with. I keep on coming over and it's gone. And I just saw him chewing it up. Oh, there it is. That guy. Love him trouble. We have our little resident loon here. He's been out there for as long as I've been here. Hasn't said a peep. I have to keep Toby uh, tied up right now. He's been taken off of the water. Right now he's trying to hide. He's a little cute baby. Right there. Goodness gracious. He's doing a hell of a job. That should get us going, and uh, this should just keep us going for an hour or two. Toby's getting a little weirded out. I think he's 
hearing things. Da, da, da. Wow, we have a beautiful fire going right now. Yeah, it's a nice night. It's going to be one of those nights where you sit by the fire, it's great. And the moment you walk away, you're like, holy shit, it's cold. <laughs> right now, here, it's, it's pretty darn toasty. This is a bigger fire than I usually have. Now, another thing I really like about this uh, handle is that I often like to have the option of doing my water over the or on the fire. And uh, with this, you can. You can just take it and just hook onto the one side here. And then you just press it against here and you tilt it. So whenever it tilts, it's putting pressure on the other one here. But you can hold it quite, quite sturdy. So now I can take that and I can just put that into the fire. And then let go with that handle. And then let that boil all right so now i'm just going to hook it here tilt it a little bit take that set that down and so now we're good to go so i'm going to go ahead and pour a little bit of that into my cup and we're going to keep this water hot in the cozies Put this in here, like so. I need to actually bring this down a little bit more. A little more room to pull this out. And put this on top. And that will keep that nice and toasty warm for quite some time. And Toby has just crawled up onto my lap here. <laughs> He's, uh, he's getting a little chilly. Our rip snorting now. We just something about sitting down and enjoying that cup of tea. I'm on the fire like this. Got Toby on my lap. Yeah, this is out of focus. This is something that I usually bring with me, but I don't always use. But whenever I do, I, uh, I quite enjoy it. It's just an extra one habit. And that is popcorn. Not very much, just enough to, uh, to make a serving or two. And um, I always have ghee with me anyways. And so it's a really easy thing. Just a little bit of ghee, toss it in. That's quite a bit of ghee for this, but it's all that I have left. So I'm just going to use the rest of it. I'm just going to warm that up a little bit. Alright. That's just melting right down now. So let's go ahead and add it to the Just turn up the cover, the bottom of your pot. You're definitely gonna want this guy on here. All right, and we'll let this, we'll let this go. I don't want to burn it. All right, let's see here. What's our what are our spoils? Ooh, nice! Right to the top. Holy cow! Oh my gosh! That heat is right through it. Mm -hmm. oh, Toby's in the hammock. Ready to go. Tonight's supposed to go down to minus two. We'll see how that goes. We've been pretty toasty though. No problems. Hey, Toby. Yeah, he's doing fantastic. 
All right. Okay, Toby, I'm coming. So we are uh, in the hammock now. And I've got right behind me here, I have my stuff pillow. And in that I have my pants and my sweater. So the sweater's on top, so nice and cozy. Up here I've got my knife, and behind that I have a bear banger. Um, I often forget to set those up, or I'm still kind of debating if I should keep on bringing them. Because half the time I don't set them up. Jeez, oh, if I don't. It is under the, uh, the cover. So now, although this is my sleeping bag, I just zip it up down to about uh, two feet from the foot box on the bottom. And then I leave the left open, leave the rest open, and you just use it like a quilt. And you just lay it over top of yourself. So, so that's how this is all set up. So eventually I'll probably get a quilt, but this is uh, doing the trick. And then down here on the, the lines here, I've got my, this is basically all the stuff that was in my pockets, whatnot, but I have extra batteries, that sort of thing. And at the end here, we've got my clothes and my hat hanging up on that line. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty comfy. Toby is able to, uh, he can lay on his back on the side of me. He uh, lays across me. He'll lay closer to my feet. So, so far he's not really too picky about where he's at. Once he's tired here, he's really tired. So he just kind of conks out. And my favorite thing about this whole setup is the fact that you can see outside, I don't know if you can, anyhow, this whole side is open. I can look out and see everything that's going on. Well, this is the last night on uh, on this trip. So, I'm gonna enjoy the sleep, and uh, I think we're gonna try to head out early, but uh, no promises. I think I got a fogged up lens here. But I just got up, it's about uh, 4.30 in the morning right now. It is freezing out there. Toby is be in here. He's just kind of tucked in on one of my side. He's just pushing to my side here, or in my front. All right, well, we just got up. <clears throat> it's about six o'clock right now. And uh, it is gold. Uh, they were calling for minus two, I believe it. A um, little chilly last night, uh, my gear here isn't made for minus two that I have with me right now, but I put on another layer and it was good. Toby did pretty good as well, he was ready to hit the road this morning though. Um, so I can hear the wind overhead, water is calm right now though, um, although it's always calm here, um, I'm curious what it's like on the other side. but. I think we're going to try to get an early shot. It's supposed to get rain or snow today, and with being so cold, it'll be no fun. But well, we are now getting hail. You can see this here. So that's ice from the sky. I'll take this over rain any day. I got the, the hammock and the tarp down. We just need to pack up the rest of the uh, the rest of the gear here. So this morning I'm doing an easy one, and that is just uh, doing some Quaker Harvest Crunch with um, some powdered milk already in it. And I'm just going to add some water to that and lift that down and get out of here before this hail turns into, uh, into rain. Just basically add a little bit of water right into the bag. So, there it is, we're good to go. I'm just getting the boat ready to go here because it's hailing right now. I've gone ahead and put up Toby's little tarp. This is a little tarp that I made up. Um, just got some little stretchy ends here, some carabiners on the corners to uh, hook it up. And uh, yeah, this just keeps the sun and the rain or the hail uh, off of him while we're, uh, while we're paddling along keep them from getting hypothermia or from getting overheated. Well, we are off. Still hailing out. Uh, we got Toby here. We're in the boat. 
and we're just gonna be heading home. There are no portages to get home. That's crazy. But uh, anyways, we're probably about an hour, an hour or so away. Here's the, uh, here's the hail. Gathering a little tarp here. Toby's gotta be a little chilly. He's not complaining though. He's not shivering or anything. He has a tough little nut. He is good for this stuff. All right, anyways, I got my gloves on. I got all my layers on. I'm warm enough. And uh, you got the wind going on their back, and I don't hear the wind being too crazy on the other side of this island, so I think we're gonna be good. Man, I'm telling you, this has been a fight with the wind every step of the way. So I got on the other side of the island, sure enough, the wind has picked up. And we already got little white caps out here. And it's just after seven in the morning. Usually this is your get up early, calm time to hit the water. No, not, not this trip. Having a lighter boat and the lighter dog, it makes for uh, the wind, it's a lot easier for the wind to catch me. Ah, holy cow. There we got a little beaver here. Just leading the way for us. Yeah, this tarp really works well. So if he just hangs out right underneath it, he can poke his head out. He stays, uh, he stays dry. And if we were to have any, Stay out of the sun too. Well, the hail is really coming down now. You can hear it bouncing around. Toby is nice and comfortable under his little tarp. He's got his um, he's got my little pad to keep him off of the cold bottom of the boat. So yeah, this is working really good for him. So I tried to keep things light again on this trip. I uh, ended up at a base pack weight of 26 pounds. That's no food, no water, no camera gear. Um, and my walk-in weight with everything loaded was uh, 35 pounds. Right now, my main thing is I'm generally trying to gun for 25 pounds for my base pack. That's for canoeing. If I do hiking, I may see about going a little lighter yet. But I've been really, really enjoying the lighter pack. It just makes everything so much better. It's just a matter of getting comfortable with less. Over the years, it's just been, as I figure out what I really use and what I don't use, I just bring um, less and less with me. And it's less to have to buy, it's less to have to maintain, and it's fewer things that you can lose. There's fewer things that you have to keep track of. So it just makes the whole thing easier. All right, well, still getting quite a bit of hail. And our hail catcher here, we're, we're making a slushy over here now. This has been, I don't know if you can see my face here or not, a little dark, but nothing I can do about it. Um, we're not too far from the start now. This has been a, uh, has been a good trip. I've enjoyed it. So this is uh, Toby and I signing off for another uh, Maddie the Goose trip. So stay tuned guys and I'll, uh, I'll come out with some more. Uh, please do uh, like, share, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. It really does help and it just helps to motivate me to get the camera out those few extra times and shoot some more footage. All right, lots of love. Idea what Toby was thinking. <laughs> I let him out of the boat and he just took off over here and jumped in the water. I thought, <laughs> what are you doing? He thought it was a road. 
or something. It is freezing. I mean, that water is frigid. Oh, Toby, it's a good thing we're at the car. Good Lord, you crazy dog. <laughs> 